This is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. The inquest into the police shooting of Yasser Yacoub has finally concluded. I first featured this story on the channel in 2019, and he was shot on the 2nd of January 2017 by the police. This happened after he left Akbar's calf in Bradford and he was driving to Huddersfield before he was stopped by the police. Mr. Yacoub was the passenger in an Audi A4 that was driven by Mohsin Amin. And behind them was a VW Sirocco, driven by Rexino Arapaj and also David Butlin, who was at the time described as the toughest man in Britain. Regular subscribers to the channel will know that back in 2019, I did a three-part special on the story of Meghi Khan and also Yasser Yacoub, and went into detail as much as we could at the time into what happened on that fateful day. Jurors heard this month that the Audi and the VW were travelling on the motorway at a junction known as Ainley Top and the police car boxed them in and told them to stop. An officer that was only referred to in the inquest as V39 told the inquest that he requested that they stopped and Mr Yacoub didn't show his hands. He crouched down and raised the handgun up to the car window and this is when the officer said that he fired three shots through the car window with one of them hitting Yasser in the chest and causing catastrophic blood loss. The officer told the jury that he shot his firearm because he feared for his life and also his colleagues and he said he knew he was so close to the vehicle that he was about to be shot. A loaded pistol was found in the footwell where Yacoub had been sitting and there was also a silencer and more ammunition found in the glove box. News travelled fast around the area and Yasser's family turned up to the scene that included his mum and dad and also his children's mother. Dr Kirsten Hope gave evidence to the court about Yasser's death and determined that it was gunshot wounds. Yasser must have been sat in an upright position when he was shot, she said. The jury was told that Yasser sustained two gunshot wounds and one of them was fatal. The pathologist also said that the gunshots were consistent with two of them coming through the windscreen and straight into Yasser and the other one hit the satnav. With Yasser now being dead, the other men in the car would be charged with offences and stand trial. And the driver, Mosin Amin, gave evidence and said the police did not give any warning before they fired and he thought he was going to be shot next. He gave his evidence on video link from HMP Full Sutton where he was serving time for the firearm possession in relation to the gun that was found in the car. And he gave evidence at the inquiry this year. The jury heard that a surveillance team had followed the Audi and Sirocco from Akbar's Cafe in Leeds Road, Bradford where it is understood that a criminal meeting was taking place between Yasser and a number of other people that included Mosin Amin and Mohammed Meghi Khan. Officers had information that suggested that somebody would be in possession of a firearm. Amin would later be jailed for 18 years for conspiracy to possess a firearm with intent to endanger life. And he confessed to the police that he was at the meeting in Bradford on January the 2nd, 2017. He also told the inquest that he didn't see Mr. Yacoub reach for any gun and no presence of any gun. The court heard that Amin stopped the car when the police boxed him in. I just remember seeing lasers and I didn't have time to notice the lights. The shots were fired immediately. As soon as it was blocked in, the shots were fired. The court also heard that there was messages sent to Mr. Yacoub about a man that owed money and that's what they believed the meeting was about. Meggy Khan was the man that was meant to collect the money and Yasser was trying to negotiate for somebody else. This video was sponsored by DB Bulldogs, an ethical dog breeder from Leeds and the best puppies for your family. Don't forget to follow on Instagram to get more information and questions. Jurors also heard from David Butler, who was the driver of the white Sirocco and the so-called hardest man in Britain at the time he'd featured in a documentary. He said he'd known Yasser Yacoub for around six to seven years and they were introduced for a mutual friend. He said that he coincidentally had bumped into Mr Yacoub and he asked him to go with him to the meeting with Meggy Khan. Mr Butler was acquitted of any firearm possession and conspiracy at the trial but was convicted of possession of an offensive weapon. He said he knew it was something to do with money but he didn't think it was that serious and he said that I was wary of him, I knew I should be wary of him. He told the court that his role was just to stay outside and make sure there was no trouble. Several years later, the inquest has now wrote a statement about their findings and they have ruled that the death of Yasser Yacoub, who was fatally shot by West Yorkshire Armed Police on the 2nd of January 2017, was a lawful killing. 
He was being investigated in connection to an organised crime group and links to firearms and drugs, and the conclusion that the jury gave was from the evidence produced by V39, the officer who shot him dead. They believed that his life was in danger and he used reasonable force by discharging his firearm. A statement has also been released by West Yorkshire Police Chief Constable John Robbins. The inquest recently concluded into the death of Mr Yassi Yacoub, who was fatally shot by a police firearms officer on the 2nd of January 2017. The loss of life in any circumstances is of course tragic and our sympathies remain with the Yacoub family for the loss of their loved one. But I also want to acknowledge how difficult the past five to six years have been for the officers and staff who were directly involved. This has been a constant in their lives, from the incident itself, the criminal prosecutions, the investigation by the Independent Office for Police Conduct, and finally, the recent inquest itself. During the IOPC investigation, officers and staff were rightly treated as witnesses throughout. The outcome of that investigation did not raise any criminal or misconduct issues for any officers or staff. During the inquest, I followed the daily proceedings. My overwhelming impression was of the professionalism, knowledge, expertise and compassion displayed by all the officers and staff involved. I hope that people will now see that the tragic loss of life, unfortunate as it was, was necessary to keep the public safe in what was a rapidly unfolding and dangerous situation. It is thankfully rare that any police action results in the death of an individual. When it does, it is right that we open to the full scrutiny, just as in this case. The actions of all involved have been scrutinised by both the IOPC and now by a jury before a coroner. The inquest has provided a clear and transparent understanding of what happened. Our sole intention was to safely detain Mr Yacoub and to remove illegally held firearms from our streets. However, as events rapidly unfolded, it's obvious that the threat at the time was real, and as a result, an officer had to take the necessary and proportionate action. Firearms officers perform a highly skilled and incredibly demanding role. They are brave and courageous people who keep us all safe. I believe the individuals who make up West Yorkshire Police's firearms teams are amongst the best in the world. It is a job that carries a huge responsibility and sometimes means making the hardest of all decisions. Police officers and staff face dangers every day to keep the public safe. I'm proud of them and the work they do, but they can only do it with the support and understanding of all of the communities we serve. And I remain committed to policing being professional, open and transparent. So I hope that the inquest has helped explain in detail what occurred in the lead-up to the death of Mr Yacoub. The story of the police shooting of Yasser Yacoub has been ongoing for over five years and the family are still not happy with what the police have said and also what the jury at the inquest have concluded. But at the same time, closure is really needed for everybody involved in this. Meggie Khan would later be convicted for the murder of Major Iqbal on Sanford Road in Bradford Moor. He was jailed alongside Tony Grant and his appeal was also rejected by the courts and he will serve a minimum of 26 years in prison. So really appreciate you joining me today and please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and thank you to everybody that has followed the channel for so long and I hope it continues as well. I'll be back again very shortly with some more news.